The last part of this lecture involves identifying the best Lewis structure out of several possibilities. Resonance and formal charge can be used to analyze a Lewis structure to identify the best structure. For an example, consider NOCl. When one does the math, the structure has three bonds and six lone pairs. Nitrogen goes in the middle. Here is one possible structure where we have a single bond to the oxygen and a double bond to the chlorine, and the octet rule is satisfied for all atoms. Here is another possible structure where the double bond is between nitrogen and oxygen and the single bond is to chlorine. These are not equivalent resonance structures because we have different formal charges on the individual atoms. In the structure on the left, oxygen is a minus one formal charge, compared to the structure on the right when oxygen is a zero formal charge. So as these structures are not equivalent, we need to identify the best structure. One of them is more preferred than the other. One way our options differ is by formal charge. We can have a minus on the oxygen, a zero on the nitrogen, and a positive on the chlorine, or zero, zero, and zero. Now, while oxygen may be happy with a minus formal charge, chlorine is certainly not happy with a plus one formal charge. So the preferred structure is this one right here, where all the formal charges are equal to zero. So this is somewhat like thinking of the energies of the different representations. If I have a y-axis with energy, the structure on the left is at higher energy than the structure on the right. Therefore, the structure on the right is the preferred representation. So if one is asked, what is the NO bond order in NOCl? use only the preferred representation. So when one looks at the nitrogen-oxygen bond order, there's a double bond there, so the double bond is two. Why is that? Because there is only one best structure. That structure has an NO double bond. So when you have one best structure, use your eyeball and look at it to see what is the bond order for that one fixed structure. Now that doesn't mean the structure on the left can't contribute a little bit to what the true structure looks like, but this structure is our best representation and our closest approximation to what NOCl looks like. As a reminder, when you have equivalent resonance structures, the bond order can be averaged. These two structures for SO2 are the exact same structure looking at one another across a mirror plane represented by the double-headed arrow. So for the structure on the left, the sulfur-oxygen bond order for oxygen A, if we look at it, is two. For the structure on the right, the sulfur-oxygen bond order for the same oxygen, oxygen A, is 1. What is the average of 2 and 1? It's 1.5, or 3 halves. So for this structure, where we have equivalent resonance structures, if I write an energy diagram here, both structures are at the same energy level. So our best representation of this structure is where the sulfur-oxygen double bond is smeared out between the three atoms. So for equivalent resonance structures, average. For inequivalent resonance structures, focus on the one with the lowest formal charge distribution, try to get to all zeros, and then pick the one preferred representation for your bond order. So in NOCl, the bond order is two. And if you'd like, instead of averaging the bonds over the bonding regions, you can average over structures. For the top one, I have two bonds plus one bond, 
divided by two possible structures to give me a bond order of 1.5. For the bottom example, I have two bonds averaged in one structure to give me a bond order of two. So this is an example where formal charge can be used to determine the preferred structure for thiocyanate. So since the question has us looking at formal charge, we're going to need to get the formal charge of all nine atoms. So I'll get you started. For structure A, when I divide the bonds equally, sulfur is in group six, but there are five electrons in the circle, so sulfur's formal charge for structure A is plus one. Carbon has group four and four electrons within the formal charge circle, so its formal charge is zero. Nitrogen has seven electrons within the formal charge circle, but it is group five, so the formal charge is minus two. So I will let you double check my math for the other formal charges. I have them below. Hopefully you're going to say to yourself, well, if my mission is to get as close to zero for formal charge on each atom, then clearly A is not a choice. So what one is down to is, should the minus one formal charge be on sulfur or on nitrogen to make our more stable representation? To answer this, think about which one of these atoms is more electronegative and therefore can support a minus one formal charge more comfortably. This is another question concerning choosing the best structure by formal charge. Now hopefully you're going to take a look at C and say, no, nothing with two bonds to hydrogen. So let's look at the rest of the structures. It would help to know how many shared pairs there are in this structure. And I'll help you out by telling you that it is four. But I highly recommend you check my math. So that knocks out B. So now we are to looking at A and D. So I want you to think about the formal charges. And here they are for you. And at this point, I hope you look at this and say, well, I think they might actually be the same. There's a minus one formal charge on the oxygen for A, and there's a minus one formal charge on the oxygen for D. So there are two answers for this question. Please input one of them into your assignment. Okay, this last question is the pièce de résistance. Now, if my French is terrible, I'm sorry. I have not ever been taught French, but this is a very challenging and difficult question. Going back to the previous question, we want to determine the carbon-oxygen bond order, and we should think about how many preferred resonance structures exist and where the bond shifts. So let's go back to that screen. Structures A and D are my possibility, and these are equivalent resonance structures. When you get bond order, it should be the number of bonds divided by the bonding regions where resonance occurs. So let me put a circle around the changes between compounds A and D. Does the carbon-hydrogen bond participate at all in that resonance? Mm, no, it's just the area circled. So within the area circled, determine number of bonds divided by number of bonding regions, or if you like, number of equivalent structures. So now that you hopefully have an answer fixed, Please choose it.